the truth that matters. It's what we can sell to a jury. Then put me on the stand. You've been straight with us from the beginning. You know how to move in here. I'm telling you. I need a lot more money than this so I can help my mom. With power bringing back pretty much, it seems like everyone from the previous show, I guess the next question is for my man Larry, when are we going to see Ramona put Tonya? I don't see why they wouldn't bring her back. We've got Rodriguez, we've got Tate, Cooper Sacks. I guess next we're going to see Eliza Marie. Um, damn, they might bring back um, Cousin Benny from the dead. But one of the things that happened in episode two that keeps the conspiracy going, they never show Ghost's dead body. So ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to see what clues we can find. This is going to be my episode three trailer review where I slow it down clip by clip and we break it down and see if we can find anything to help us with coming episode. And if you're finding me for the first time, please subscribe to this channel. Follow me on Instagram, people. Turn on the notification for the videos. I'm trying to get my Instagram numbers up. Sometimes I do videos on my other channel. I'm doing a whole lot of my stock market videos, mostly on the gram. So you definitely want to follow me on the gram. And you can send me messages up there when you've got hot takes about the show because I do try to put your theories up here. And also follow me and Larry live Monday, Wednesday, and Friday night at 9 p.m. where we discuss TV shows, politics, money, pop culture. We go through everything, and we want to hear from you guys. All right, let's watch the trailer one more time and then finish picking it apart, seeing if we can find clues. Anybody who's around Tariq ends up either dead or locked up. The way you're running things, it ain't working. Y'all got 10 seconds to tell me what the fuck is going on in here. Opening scene, ladies and gentlemen, you got Tasha talking to Davis McClain, basically telling her it's not about the truth. <laughs> and, you know, if you was hoping he was gonna give a Martin Luther King the truth, shall set you free speech. Well, hell, you can forget that shit because if we ain't learned anything during this Trump presidency, lying sells, and it sells if you have people that don't give a damn if you're lying. So he's basically telling Tasha, look, it's not about the truth. It's about what we can prove to a jury. And it wouldn't surprise me if they go get a jury that is rigged to help Tasha get out of jail. Mark my words, you might see something like that. And then you just see them flash to, it looks like um, they go going to a hearing. You see Tasha, they're all made up. Davis McClain looking right. The private, in, private investigator in the cut. And then you see the investigator telling Davis McClain, why in the hell should we listen to Tasha? We, she's lied to us before. She's probably lying now. And us as viewers, we know she's not being 100% true. But we've seen them turn a lie into a story that gets them off in the past. I don't know why this would be any different. We'll see what happens. But one of the main storylines for this particular season, ladies and gentlemen, is going to be getting Tasha ass out of jail. And I wish they would do that sooner than later. Next scene, we see a clip of what looks like probably Tariq getting money together because he still owes Davis McClain 450 G's and he's got to get the money. And maybe that's somebody's money he's, he's handling, but I think that's probably, it's either going to be the Tejada's money or it's Tariq handling somebody's money. Next clip, we see Tasha talking to the, the inmate who needed the morning after pill. Now, the word on the street is this young lady right here is also a stunt double for Nisha Nash that plays on Claws. This is one of her big breaks on power. And they're saying that she is going to be the female equivalent to Tommy. I, I got to see it. And if that is really and truly the case, that means Tasha is going to be in jail probably this whole entire season. Man... I don't know if I want that to be drawn out that long, but in any event, the show is good regardless. So if she's going to be that Tommy dog in jail, then here, I'm here, hell, I'm here for it. Then we see Tasha looks like she's probably getting ready to go to that arraignment she's got set up with Davis McClain. We see Reek counting money. And then in the very next clip, I want you guys to look closely at that hand because we know we try to break this down for clues. He's talking to a white guy saying he needs money to get his mom out of jail. That can only be one of two people. That's either Braden or Stearns. Now, 
he, he seems as though he didn't want to get Braden involved. So that could be Stearns. But at the same time, we know he's going to need Brayton if he's going to get back into the drug game. So we'll see which white guy that is in the next episode. Then we see Reek and the Tejada family walking into a building. And then if you look closely at that chin, that appears to be another white guy. But look at the look on Tariq's face. Tariq looked like he's seen a damn ghost. Is that Cooper Sacks? Could that be John Mock? We'll have to see. But whoever it is, is somebody that spooked the hell out of Reek that he probably seen last season that was harassing him to come clean to them about his daddy. I think that might be John Mock, but you guys mark my words, mark this video, and we'll find out who it is. Then we see Tariq standing outside of some club that's got horses on it. I don't know where the hell he's at. Like he's got horses, water fountain. Two dudes in the background doing whatever they want to do. And then next we see, this is a clip that we've seen from the summer trailers. We see Mo talking to her daughter, Diana, basically saying, you know, get whatever you can off of Reek. Now, the thing is going to come down to who's going to play the other one the most. Because this is kind of one of those, I scratch your back, you scratch mine, but we're not going to tell each other that's what we're doing. And we know the history of Tariq and his family. They seem to always make it out of this, but we're still learning the history of the Tejada family. Now, based on what we've learned so far about them, them kids, the son is dumb as hell. If Reek had to break down to him, someone who's snitching getting out of jail early, um, either he's dumb or they haven't had a whole lot of experience with that behavior, which would mean how long have they been a real deal cartel? Because you're going to deal with that in year one of being a cartel. And then in the next clip, we see Drew and Kane about to punch somebody in the face. Looks like they're in some kind of convenience store. You see Kane got on his America-loving um, coat. But is that a woman or a man? You see that? Do they got sideburns? Looks like they got sideburns. I can't tell. But in any event, the next clip, we see them running. Now... You would think that they might have come out of that door from the store, but if you look closely, look at that car. That's somebody that just pulled up, and it looks like the door on the car is still open down there by the fire hydrant. And whoever it is, you got Kane and Drew running. Now, we all think Kane is a pretty badass, so who would have him running? It looks like the individual chasing them has a gun. Can't wait to figure out who that is. Then in the next clip, Mary J. Blige goes to the prison to see her husband getting that conjugal visit on. And I want to do, he sniff all them other penises that done been in them drawers. And he's basically telling Mary J., look, honey, um, you ain't doing your business out there on them streets. And that would lead you to wonder, this, is he found out about the Frankie situation? Um, does he know something about ghosts and Tariq? We're going to have to see what happens in that conversation, but I can't wait to see because you know they're going to keep Daddy Tejada involved in this thing somehow. And obviously he's able to still pull strings in jail because he was able to get Tasha that cell phone and that morning after pill. Then they fast clip to Davis and the investigator looking at someone. I assume maybe this is Cooper Sachs they're talking to. It could be that D.A. Sullivan, or it could be Rodriguez, who you guys saw has got a hard-on for Cooper Sacks because he's nothing but a pure punk ass. We see Tariq creeping, looking through a door, which is something Tariq loves to do. He always trying to escape into something. And then the very next clip, very, very telling clip. Mo comes around the corner. I'm assuming this is their home. I haven't seen the house enough to know if it's really their house or not. And she's basically like, y'all got 10 seconds to tell me what the hell is going on. And you see the look on Kane's face. Kane is probably sitting here saying, how the hell are you going to tell us to do something when you sneaking around with a cop and they ain't told us nothing about that? I guarantee you that's what this is about. They've been having, they probably had a little powwow amongst the kids about what mom is up to. She might just been coming back from the prison and walks in on them discussing something of that nature. 
Why are you stepping out with a cop, but you're still with daddy? Maybe they was discussing Tariq. Maybe they was discussing Frank. Maybe they was discussing them going to the store, beating up that woman or man, and then getting chased by somebody out on them streets. I wonder what this is going to lead to. Guess we'll find out this coming Sunday on episode numero three. And that's going to do it for this video. Please leave me all your comments about anything that you think I missed in this slow down trailer clip video that I did. I do these for a lot of the TV shows I follow. So, you know, be sure to turn on those notifications. Subscribe to my channel. Check out all my videos. Be sure to follow me on Instagram. Check me out Monday, Wednesday, and Friday night at 9 p.m. with the living legend Larry as we go live. And until that next sexy as hell trailer review, I'll see you.